All right, let's get on to the fun stuff. Let's check out the synthesis models. The first in the green section here is uh, a pair of classic waveforms. So these are virtual analog synthesis of classic waveforms. The harmonics is the detuning between the two waves. The timbre is a variable square modulator, so it goes from a narrow pulse um, all the way up to full square hard sync formants. So up here you can start to hear kind of that vowel sound, that's kind of that classic formant sound. And then the morph is a variable saw modulator that goes from triangle to saw with an increasingly wide notch. So this is actually... Um, pretty similar to the braids seesaw voice here and then as you know there is the aux output so this sounds a little different let's get them both together just for a second now just the aux this is the sum of two hard synced waveforms, the shape of which is controlled by morph and uh, detuning again by harmonics. Okay, let's move on to the uh, the next voice now here. This is the wave shaping oscillator. So this is an asymmetric triangle processed by a wave shaper and a wave folder. Let's listen to the main out here. So the harmonics is the wave shaper waveform. The timbre is the wave folder amount. You can hear not much happening with it all the way down. The noon position, a lot more intense. And of course, all the way up, we get even more intense. Uh, the morph now is the waveform asymmetry. And then the aux out is a variant employing another wave folder curve. Now let's listen to them together. So nice and simple. Moving on to the third voice on the green side, we've got the two operator FM. This is two sine wave oscillators modulating each other's phase. The harmonics is the frequency ratio. The timbre is the modulation index. And the morph is the feedback in the form of operator 2 modulating its own phase past 12 o'clock. And then below 12 o'clock, we have operator 2 modulating operator 1's phase. So this is a little more chaotic. And then the aux is just a nice sub-oscillator. That still gets uh, the same treatment as far as the, uh, the modulation goes. So now we're on to the granular formant oscillator. This is a simulation of formants and filtered waveforms through multiplication, addition, and synchronization of segments of sine waves. That's a lot of information. Um, let's just take a listen here. Harmonics is the frequency ratio between formant 1 and 2. Timbre is the formant frequency. Morph is the formant width and shape.
And then the aux is a simulation of filtered waveforms by windowed sine waves. So this is very uh, close to the Braid's Z voice um, or Z models. Uh, and then the harmonics controls the filter type from peaking to low pass to band pass and then high pass. So let's take a listen to that. And then together. So as you probably have gathered by now, uh, really, really good for stereo. I mean, all of these, all of these voices with these alternate, with this alternate aux output. So let's move on now to the next one, which is a harmonic oscillator. This is an additive mixture of harmonically related sine waves. The harmonics, um, this is the number of bumps in the spectrum. The timbre is the index of the most prominent harmonic. And then the morph is the bump shape from flat and wide to peaked and narrow. And then the auxiliary output is a variant including only the subset of harmonics present in the draw bars of a Hammond organ. And then together. Next up is the wavetable oscillator. This is four banks of eight by eight waveforms accessed by a row and column with or without interpolation. This is better understood, of course, when we listen to it. So here is the, uh, the main output, the harmonics. Uh, is the bank selection. So it's got four uh, interpolated banks followed by the same four banks in reverse order without interpolation. So we have an A, B, C, D all interpolated and then we've got D uninterpolated, C, B, and A all uninterpolated. Um, and then the timbre is the row index. Within a row the waves are sorted by spectral brightness. And the morph is the column index. And then the aux is just a lo-fi output. And then together. All right, now let's talk about the chord voice. This is a fan favorite, one of my personal favorites. So first up, your, um, your harmonics knob will control the chord type from octave to fifth to suspended fourth to minor, minor seventh, minor ninth, minor eleventh, a six nine, a major ninth, a major seventh, and then finally a major chord. The timbre controls the chord inversion and transposition. So that's just kind of choosing uh, what notes are your root, um, or not your root, but um, you can play lower notes than your root and you can also transpose these notes in this chord higher. So you get your root note from your, your frequency knob here. And then the morph is the uh, waveform selection. The first half of the knob goes through a selection of string machine-like raw waveforms. And then the second half of the knob scans a small wavetable. And 
And what's really cool here is the aux out is the root note of the chord. See, as you can see, the harmonics doesn't affect the root note because it's just one single note and that is whatever we set frequency to. And if we remember, the harmonics sets the chord type. So this is actually selecting what notes are in your chord. Um, so let's just turn those up together. And finally, on the green side, we have the vowel and speech synthesis mode. This one's pretty fun. The harmonics uh, crossfades from formant filtering to different types of vowels and then goes through several different banks of words. So you're not going to change words within these uh, banks here because you have to use another parameter. Uh, the timbre is the species selection. So the morph is the phenome or word segment selection. So this is uh, really fun to patch things in, but let's just take a listen really quick. Let's patch a trigger in. Slow that down a little bit. As I said earlier, if you're using the trigger in, sometimes these uh, attenuverters have another function with no CV present. So what happens here is the FM attenu attenuverter controls the intonation. And then the morph controls the speed. And the aux is the unfilter vocal cords signal. All right, now we are moving on to the red mode, which is more percussive and noise oriented. And the first one up is a granular cloud, which is a swarm of eight enveloped sawtoothed waves. A lot of these don't sound super great um, until you start triggering it. Um, but the harmonics is the amount of pitch ran randomization. The timbre is the grain density. The morph is the grain duration and overlap. And then the aux out uh, is a variant with sine wave oscillators. So a little softer. Kind of sounds like a uh, rusty gate. Speaking of gates, let's plug one in. So the next uh, voice here in the percussive mode 
is a filtered noise. So this is a variable clock white noise processed by a resonant filter. The harmonics knob is a filter response from low pass to band pass to high pass. The timbre is the clock frequency. And the morph is the filter resonance. And then the aux is a variant processed by two bandpass filters with uh, their separation controlled by harmonics. So let's listen to them both together. Of course, we want to listen to that with a gate in it as well. Here's a good example of these attenuverters having another function when there's no CV patched in. Moving along, we have our particle noise. So this is dust noise processed by networks of all pass or band pass filters. The harmonics is the amount of frequency randomization. The timbre is the particle density. The morph knob is a uh, filter type, so from 12 o'clock, or from uh, all the way down up until 12 o'clock, this is a reverber reverberating all pass network. And then it just in gets increasingly uh, more resonant in, and into band pass filters. And then the aux is the raw dust noise. trigger into that one. And moving on, we have what is called the inharmonic string modeling, and the manual actually doesn't have a section explaining this, um, so we'll just take a listen to it. Ox out. And together. Then next up we have our modal resonator bank. So this is like a mini rings basically. So you can already hear, that's very ringsy. The harmonics is the amount of inharmonicity, or material selection. The timbre is the excitation brightness and dust density. Oh, I, I forgot to mention that um, this is a rings that is excited by dust noise. That's why we get sound out of it without triggering it, because with rings, you know, you have to send a, a, an in signal or uh, a trigger. So again, the timbre is the excitation, brightness, and dust density. Morph is the decay time, or the energy absorption. That'll become more clear when we start triggering it. And then the aux is the raw exciter signal, so that dust noise. 
So as you can see, the timbre affects it. But nothing else does because the timbre is the excitation brightness and dust dens density. So let's send a trigger into it. Just listen to the main output. So there's that decay time. You can really see uh, it working there with being triggered. We'll listen to both at the same time. So now we're moving on to the final three voices on the red side. Um, they're all just different analog drum models. So first up is the bass. I just adjusted the frequency of the whole module so we can actually get some bass sounds out of it. Um, so it'll be a little bit lower. You'll notice that the frequency knob will be uh, controlling the module a little bit differently than it has up until this point. Um, so let's just turn up one. Get a bass sound. Not all that interesting because it is a drum model, so we'll just move forward with the trigger. Obviously, the uh, the frequency is the, the frequency of the, um, the actual tone coming out. The harmonics is the attack sharpness. The timbre is the brightness. And then the morph is the decay time. Then the aux out is just an emulation of another classic bass drum circuit. Same controls. So we're going to listen to those together. On to the next model. This is a snare drum, so let's turn this up in the mix. Sounds pretty noisy there without a trigger so let's go ahead and trigger it nice and snary um so just like the well th these are all very similar but here the harmonics is the balance of the harmonic and noisy components super noisy just harmonic uh the timbre is the balance between the different modes of the drum And the morph is the decay time. And finally, we have the analog hi-hat mod. This is uh, one of my more used modes here. So again, not all that great sounding, so let's trigger it. Because I tuned this down, let me go ahead and just bring that back up really quick so we can get higher pitched hi-hats. So once again, holding down the right button and moving the harm will uh, basically bring us up in our octaves or down in our octaves. So. The harmonics is the balance of metallic and filtered noise. The timbre is a high high pass filter cutoff. So, ooh, that's nice and hi hatty, right? And then the morph is uh, the decay time. So you can get nice opening and closing hats. And then aux is a variant with a different flavor of tuned noise based on ring modulated square waves. So this is really great for getting some uh, stereo uh, hi-hats going.
And there you have it. Those are all the different synth modes. So why don't we build a patch, kind of utilizing the two modules together to show you how far you can get with just the two oscillators. All right, so here is my super busy patch. As you can see, I got a little carried away. Um, but the takeaway here is that all the voices or every sound that you hear is just knit and beehive. Um, I am processing the auxiliary side from each one through beads here um, just for some ambiance. Uh, and I think what I want to do rather than walk you through this whole thing is play a few consecutive clips that are this exact same patch but just different voices cho chosen on each uh, the knit and the beehive and maybe some parameter switching on pachinko um, but no yeah no switching of cables or anything just to show you what kind of like uh, breadth you can get uh, with, with just these voices and I just want to really highlight that the model CV ends for each you can see these LEDs are flashing all over the place getting that set up in a, in a unique way is a really fun way to get a lot of movement and a lot of different characters of sounds and timbres um, especially you can see they're mostly lighting up red here I have my primary voices chosen on the red side but they will pop into green every once in a while um, to give that more oscillator type sound Sound. So uh, yeah, let's just watch some of these clips in a row. I hope you enjoy them. I hope this video helped you. Uh, and if you would like to learn more, please check out the Platts manual. I will have a link in the video description. Uh, if you have any questions about any of our other modules here, you can visit afterlateraudio.com. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.